Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, we've got a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Alter. This is the latest game from the Red Joker. It is a two to five player game that takes roughly 30 to 60 minutes to play, and is a competitive game where players are going to be competing with each other throughout the game to build shrines and altars on their god or goddess. So in the game itself, you are going to be playing one of these gods or goddesses trying to regain power, and you're going to do this by gaining followers that will be able to be used on rituals to gain new shrines, being able to build up altars, getting protection from other followers, and doing all kinds of other actions that will help you prove by the end of the game that you are the best and worthy to rule this world, eliminating all others in your wake. So in this video, I want to take you through the main features of the game and also show you a sample turn to help you decide whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribing to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we continue to grow, be able to produce this content. If you want to get notified anytime I drop new videos, also give that notification bell a ring as I'm constantly dropping new videos covering other Kickstarter campaigns, teaching videos, playthroughs, and unboxings, and many other types of videos. So if you want to stay up to date, hit that bell as well. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and we'll see what this one's all about. Before getting into it, I do also want to point out that all the materials here are prototype materials and are subject to change, and look a lot better than the final production copy of the game. In Alter, each player is going to be playing a god and will gain the dashboard of the god of their choice. Each god's dashboard is going to show an image of that god. Going down the side is going to be spaces for altars and shrines. And then at the bottom of the card, you're going to have the name of the god and its abilities, as each god has innate abilities that are going to make it unique in the game. And there's five different gods to choose from. The god of war, the god of light, goddess of love, goddess of death, and the ancient god. Throughout the game, players are also going to gain follower cards from the follower deck. And this deck is going to be comprised of all different types of followers. Each one of these cards is going to show the name of the follower at the top, along with some of the cards will have icons that will signify what type of follower that is. And you'll have three different icons for this. You're going to have the blue protection icon, and these are going to provide you with protection for your god, helping you defend against certain other types of cards. You'll also have some cards with the green influence, symbol on it and these cards will affect all gods except for yours for an entire round and will also allow you to shuffle up the follower deck with the follower cards that are face up to reveal new cards finally then you'll have the red activation followers and these will allow you to activate symbols such as inactive altars then some of the followers or all the followers are going to have abilities at the bottom of the card and then some will also have icons on the bottom as well some of them will have the worship icon, and with these, they are going to provide protection to your god. And then others will have the ritual symbol, which will allow you to bring a new shrine into play by playing three of these, or some of them will provide you with other abilities. Some cards are also going to have the free action symbol on the top, which will allow you to play them in addition to any other cards you play during your turn as your action. And you'll be able to carry out the abilities on the card. Other cards are simply going to have abilities and no other symbols on them. And the final thing I'll do is take you through a sample turn action to give you a better idea how this one plays. So I'm going to go ahead and have the God of War be the starting player. And during the game, it is played over an undefined number of rounds. Each round, each player will get to take a turn. And during a player's turn, that player is going to draw a card either from the face up cards that are out in the table, or they can do a blind draw off the top of the follower deck. From there, they're going to go through their cards that they have in their hand and choose one of them that they wish to play as an action. Now, you can also choose to pass at this point as your action. Once you've played a card, then you can also take any number of free actions, which again are going to be the follower cards that have the little circle symbol on them. You can do any number of these that you want to. Once you have completed that, then your turn is over and it'll pass the next player in clockwise order. And this is going to continue going until one of the endgame conditions are met. And there are three different ways the game is going to end. First, if a player completes their board having any number, at least one shrine and the four altars or any combination of. You just have to have at least one shrine built and then you have to have the rest active altars or you can have two shrines or up to three shrines built and the other two could be altars. That will also end the or that will end the game where each player is going to get a final round to complete or a final turn to complete that round and then we'll determine who has the most built 
altars, and shrines. The other two ways the game can end is if the follower deck ever runs out of cards, the players are going to continue playing, playing any cards that they have in their hands, taking actions as normal, but you will not reshuffle the follower deck. So it's just playing until there's no cards left in anybody's hands. Then you'll determine the winner. The final way is if all the shrines have been claimed, as there's only a limited number of shrines in each game based on the number of players. Once that happens again, you'll complete the round that is currently being played, and then you'll determine which player has the most built. So from there, let's go ahead and jump into the game, and I'm going to go ahead and start with the God of War. So again, during a player's turn, and let's go ahead and place his cards out. He has a wizard, a paladin, a, another wizard, and a priestess. So those are the cards that he has in his hand. So at this point, he's going to choose one of the other cards that are either face up or a blind draw to add to his hand. And I already have one priestess, and this healer is really nice. Her ability is that you can take up to three priestesses from the discard pile, and they're very useful in activating your altars. So right now, the altar that I have is inactive, so I'm going to need to activate it by playing her at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the healer, and she also could be used as, as a uh, character to, to do a ritual, which is also important, and that's a way I can get some shrines going. All right, so from there, then I'll immediately refill that stack, and then I'm going to play a card. So let's see. So the wizard has an ability that says to choose a god and destroy one of its active altars and add an inactive altar to your realm. So that could actually be really useful as the goddess of love has an active uh, altar as she starts the game with one. So I could play one of uh, those on her right away and bust that up and give myself a, a second inactive altar. Or I could play the two wizards and the paladin to do a ritual, which would allow me to add a shrine to my area, which could also be really good. Um, hmm. Or he also has the abilities, if there is space, add exactly two inactive altars to your realm. So he could also be really good for that situation. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and play him. So I'm going to add, add him to the discard pile. And then I'm going to add two inactive altars to my realm. Okay. So then I can play any number of cards that I have that are free action cards. And at this point, I do have a priestess, but I think we're going to hold on to her because active the active altars are where you can start destroying your opponent's altars. So I might want to try to, to build up. But that is also risky as there are plenty of cards that are going to cause players to discard cards from their hands. So i got to be careful on how much I save up on that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and end my turn there. It's going to pass the next player in clockwise order to go. So that is going to be the goddess of love. So she's going to be the next player. So I'll take you through the last two players' turns just to kind of blend everything together here. So I'm going to go ahead and play, or I'm going to have to draw a card first. So I'm going to go ahead and take the alchemist. No, I'm going to take the cleric. And then... Do another card. I'm going to go ahead and play the Adventurer. So this lets me add an inactive altar to my realm. And then I can do free actions if I want to. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Abomination. So this is a free action. And it says until the end or until your next turn, all gods' abilities have no effect. So all the gods' special abilities that they have I have been nullified until your next turn. So neither uh, the God of Light or God of War are going to benefit from their abilities at this point. So that can be really nasty. Now the Goddess of Love, since she played that, will not be affected by that ability. All right, and then moving over to my last player to go. I am going to, let's see, what do I want to draw here? I'm going to take the Shaman and reveal a new card. All right. I think I'm going to perform a ritual. So I'm going to go ahead and play three cards, as I need to play three for the ritual, unless I had an ability, which right now those have been nullified anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and play these three cards here and add a shrine to my area. So I have one of the conditions that I need to meet in order to finish the game. 
So from there, then it's going to move back over to the God of War to take his next turn, and that'll start a new round. But at this point, that is it. I hope you found the video helpful in deciding whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main combat section and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you, and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. Until next time, I'll see you later.